So this is the uh, right cylinder after vapor blasting. And you'll notice there's some marks on the base. 08 indicates these are 800 cc cylinders. And then over here is a letter B. Now the cylinders are graded into three classes, A, B, and C, which is a uh, grouping of cylinders based on the bore. So there's a slight difference in the bore from A through C. And my cylinders are all the B class. Now these are Nicosil cylinders, so it's entirely aluminum. And then there's a very thin plating on the inside of the bore made out of silicon nitride, a really, really hard material which doesn't wear very much. This is a document that you can get off of Dwayne Osherman's website, and it contains a summary of all the engine specifications for the various BMWs. And uh, on this page, it shows the cylinder classes, the A, the B, and the C class cylinders, and for the 800cc models, it gives you the dimensions in a range. So in millimeters, this is the range for the A, and this is the range for the B, which is the cylinders that I have, and then this is the range for the Cs. So when I do my measurements, I'm going to use these. This is the left piston after I soaked it in simple green and did a little brass wire brushing of it. And on the crown are some markings. Right here is a marking 84.775. And that's the diameter of this piston in millimeters. And when I look at the specification sheet, the uh, 800cc, and this column is the B column, it says that the diameter should be 84.775. So I have a B-class piston, which is correct because I have B-class cylinders. Now there's another classification of pistons by weight, and the negative indicates this is the minus weight class. Both pistons should be the same weight class, and mine both are marked with the negative. There's also an arrow, and that indicates that when the piston goes in the cylinder, this should point to the front of the engine. You can also figure that out from the valve pockets, because the valve pocket for the exhaust is a smaller diameter than the valve pocket for the intake. So it's uh, easy enough to use the arrow and or the valve pocket sizes to make sure when you install the piston in the cylinder, it's pointing in the correct direction. To measure the internal diameter of the cylinders, I use a bore gauge kit. It comes with a set of anvils that you can use for different diameter cylinders. And I use the 3.2, and then I added some of the spacers. And the uh, little anvils uh, screw in on this collar and stick out like that. And then there's a little set of wheels that will butt up against the cylinder wall and then this is the little in and out movement that's measured. Now the measurement is made with a dial indicator. This is a 3 to 4 inch micrometer which is the right size because the uh, cylinder diameter is between 3 and 4 inches and it includes a gauge block exactly three inches long. So I put it in between the anvils and uh, calibrated the micrometer and set it to be exactly three inches when uh, I had the gauge block in the anvils. Now in order to calibrate the bore gauge, what I want to do is set a distance here on the micrometer that's about halfway between the minimum and maximum uh, diameter of the cylinder. So I unscrewed this out until I got to 
3.339 inches, and I can flip this into millimeters, 84.810 millimeters. Those are the measurements that are right about in the middle. Then what I want to do is put the bore gauge in between the anvils and set the zero on the gauge at zero and then then I have the bore gauge calibrated. Now that's a tricky little process but you basically put it in between and you rock it a little back and forth until you get the minimum measurement on the uh, dial indicator and then you rotate the dial indicator to show the zero point. Now I'll try to uh, demonstrate that a little bit here if I can. Let me uh, zoom in a little on the dial indicator and I'll place the uh, little anvil assembly in here and as you can see as I rock it it changes dimension a little but right there's the minimum and the dial is set to zero. So I have the bore gauge calibrated ready to measure the cylinders. I set up a spreadsheet to record the information about the cylinders and the piston uh, and I indicated that it's the 1983 R80ST and it's an 83 R80 engine and my cylinder and piston classes are B. I also recorded some conversions just to make things a little simpler in the spreadsheet so millimeters per inch 25.4 inches per millimeter 0 0.0394. Now the nominal bore diameter for this engine is 84.8 millimeters or 3.3386 inches. Now <clears throat> for the B cylinder there's a maximum and minimum cylinder diameter that the B class falls within. So it's from 84.815 to 84.805 millimeters and this is the corresponding inches. The B-class piston is supposed to be 84.775 millimeters and this is the inches. Now ovality is a measure of how out of round the cylinder is and for this engine there's actually two ovality measurements. One is about 20 millimeters or 8 tenths of an inch from the top of the cylinder and the other is 115 millimeters or about 4.5 inches. And so it's 005 millimeters of ovality at the higher measurement and double that at the deeper measurement. And then for inches it's two ten thousandths and four ten thousandths. Now taper is an indication of how unparalleled the walls of the cylinder are and there's a maximum taper here which in inches is eight ten thousandths. So I'll use my measurements here and here and subtract them to compute taper. Now for the pistons the standard clearance from the factory are these values 0.04 to 0.03 millimeters However, there is an allowed maximum cl piston clearance, which is 0 0.08 millimeters or 0 0.0031 inches. So I'll compute the uh, piston clearance based on my cylinder measurements and the standard piston dimension. Now I also record where I zeroed the bore gauge, and I zeroed it at 3.339 inches and I set the micrometer zero to exactly three inches. Now my measurements for the diameter of the bore are going to be four measurements in these radials and these are the cylinder studs. So I'll take a measurement, take a measurement, take a measurement, and then take a measurement and then I'll record that in the spreadsheet. Now for the uh top measurement it uh, says it wants to be 20 millimeters down from the top of the cylinder so I took a piston ring and put it in the bore 
and then use the piston to uh, square it up and then I used my depth gauge and set it and I'm at about 20 millimeters and then I used my sharpie and just drew a circle all the way around the bore and I'll do the same one for the deeper measurement so I've got my uh, top circle at 20 millimeters from the top and then there's the bottom circle which is about 115 millimeters from the top so those are where I'm going to start taking my measurements on the cylinder bore so I just uh, put a one two three four so when I record my measurements I'm always getting the same measurement by the numbers of the quadrants and uh, I stick my bore gauge in and get it aligned with the circle and uh, and then I rock it so I get the minimum measurement and that takes a little bit of finagling but I'm just below the a tick mark a tick mark is five ten thousandths so I'm at about I'm going to say I'm somewhere just a little bit bigger than two and a half or the halfway mark so I'm going to call this about three ten thousandths is the measurement so this records the measurements I took and I measured the cylinder diameter at each of the four uh, radials across the cylinder however what I'm recording here is what I measured on the uh, dial of the dial indicator so if it says 0.25 it was 0.25 uh, thousandths greater than the zero mark so I put all those in because then I could just read them right off the dial and then I averaged them now the ovality here is computed by looking for the largest and subtracting it from the smallest so for the first set of measurements I made at the 20 millimeter or 8 tenths of an inch from the top I got an ovality of two ten thousandths and actually I've managed to get just about exactly the same ovality across all three sets of the measurements at the top and then at the bottom which was 115 millimeters from the top or four and a half inches everything came out the same so I had zero ovality at the bottom now for the taper I averaged the three top measurements and averaged the three bottom measurements and I subtracted the bottom from the top so my taper went from three ten thousandths to as little as one ten thousandth and averaged it's about two ten thousandths then to compute the final dimension of the cylinder I took the uh, average value and added it to the baseline on the bore gauge 3.339 so I get my various measurements and then for the final I took the average of all six measurements now for the maximum ovality it came out to two ten thousands and the specification is two so that was fine and then at four and a half inches or 115 millimeters I had zero ovality so the spec was four ten thousands now my taper was two ten thousands but the spec is eight so everything's great right there going over here these are the standard piston sizes and then what I did is compute the difference between this and this to give me the clearance and I came up with uh, uh, 0.015 inches or 1.5 thousandths and it could be as much as 1.6 out of the factory so it's very close to factory now the maximum allowed is 0031 so I actually have almost another 1.6 thousandths of clearance to uh, use up so it's all in really good shape 
So these are the measurements for the right cylinder. I had ovalities between 1.5 ten thousandths and 2 ten thousandths at the top measurement and uh, a very very small amount of ovality at the bottom uh, 0.5 ten thousandths. So at the top I'm within the 2 ten thousandths and at the bottom I'm well within the 4. Now the taper measurements were a little larger and they came out to about five ten thousandths, but I'm up to a maximum of eight, so that was not a problem. Now, the piston clearance is a little bit bigger. Uh, it's uh, 1.9 thousandths, but the uh, factory spec when it came out of the factory would have been about 1.6. However, the maximum is at 3.1 uh, thousandths. And so I've still got about 1.3 thousandths of wear to uh, consume, so I'm in good shape. That said, the uh, cylinder is a little bit wider at the top than the standard, and right about on the money of the maximum at the bottom. So I'm going to assume that this cylinder actually is okay, um, because I've got good piston clearance, not too excessive and my ovality and my taper are all within spec. So even though it's coming out to be just a little bit bigger up at the top, everything should be fine with this cylinder. This is a ball hone or flex hone that I got from Brush Research. And this particular model is designed for use on Nicosil in the Nicosil cylinders. Now the bike has a fairly good amount of miles on it and I want to break the glaze before I install new rings. So I'm going to use this to do that. Um, each of the little balls is on a little separate arm so it's fairly flexible. Now the other thing that I'm going to use is the uh, honing oil that they provide and I'm going to use my variable speed electric drill, battery powered. It has two speed ranges, one of which goes to a maximum of 600 RPM, and the other goes to a maximum of about 1500. I don't want to go any faster than about 5 to 600 RPM, so I'm going to set it in the low speed range when I run the ball hone into the cylinders. Now I coated the inside with the honing oil and I've got the uh, ball hone in the drill. Now I'm going to run it in and out at about two strokes a second for about 15 seconds. And uh, I've got a hone pattern in it. Now I'll clean that up and take a look at it. Okay, I've cleaned it up and I'm going to see if you can uh, see the crosshatch. Well, it's at about a 45 degree, which is what I want. And uh, that should do a good job of seating the rings into the cylinder bore.